What's going on everybody, Kwaku here, back with another video. Today I bring you an app review, an app review for Hue Dynamic for Hue by, what is it, MD2 Solutions. It is, Hue Dynamic for Hue basically is a Philips Hue bulb management tool. So basically you can control all of your lights and everything with this system, entertainment zones and things like that. Let's jump in and see how well it works and just see if you can replace your Philips Hue default app. And here it is, here is Hue Dynamic. I will tell you right off the bat, it isn't perfect for a Philips Hue management app, but it is a really good app to use if you would like Philips Hue. I've already taken a look at the Hutro app by Philips Hue, um, and that was actually picked up, the developer of that was picked up by Philips themselves to help develop their actual core app. Uh, but this is, this is another application that you can use as well to manage your Philips Hue lights. So quick run through, you have your usual menu here. If you press that tab there, the hamburger button, you got your home status, ambiences, experiences, palette and photo, disco, camera, rooms and devices, automation, fall asleep light settings and help. And then up here, you also have more settings here. So if you click that, you can manage the different settings of your app. You can see restore default brightness, uh, restore default speed. You can also set the volume for when you're actually doing things that don't relate necessarily uh, that help you manage your app that you'll see here in this video. So look in here, you got your status here running straight through quickly. Uh, status basically just shows you all the lights you have in your house. Um, and I clearly have, I have one more light than even what's shown here. It's just, it's not connected to the wall at all. And then you also, with this screen here, you can either scrub all the lights, which I'm not going to do because I have guests uh, downstairs. But if I select the room I'm actually in, and that's what you guys actually can see just about now. You'll see that I'm look you're looking at the light with the lampshade on. Uh, if I scrub bigger room and I lower it, you see that it lowers. If I make it large, it, it grows and makes it larger. Uh, you can set custom colors on it, so you can choose photo, and that jumps down technically to palette and photo kind of it's weird why it doesn't actually just jump to this tab but it is what it is palette and photo lets you pick a photo let's say i pick up um let's say i pick up this volvo xc60 that i took a picture of a long time ago uh it basically it picks up the colors that are in this photo the ones that it wants to identify i don't know why you can't just pick whatever color you want like pick something more Let's see if you can actually pick more. No, you can't. I don't know why it doesn't let you just pick more. It says multi-pick color. So you can pick up to four or pick up two colors or three colors and things like that. But basically, no matter where you move this or no matter where you resize it, uh, it will pick the most prominent colors and it will choose those for the light to try to use. So let me actually shrink this and then make it large so that way it picks more colors. And then I'll pick green. So then if I hit save there and you can save my photo ambience, I'm going to say car. And then I'm gonna hit save ambiance. Now it says saved, I can use it. Um, and then also I can go to color and pick the different colors, just like in the Philips Hue app, only this is on your computer. Uh, so you have different color choices. You got the whole color wheel, the whole color spectrum and things like that. Right now it is red, even though the lampshade makes it look a little more yellow, it is red. You got your whites, so you got your kind of like monochromatics, only it's not fully. I wish they just called it monochromatic or something because orange is not, Orange is not a white, but I understand where they're coming from. They're going incandescent, basically. So if I go there, let's say I go to white, you see it's more fluorescent feeling. Uh, photo ambiance we just took a look at. Search online is another one that sometimes doesn't work, but this time did work. You see it just crashed the whole thing. So let me pause real quick and jump back into the app. And we're back. So you see that when I did that the first time, and it's happened before, that it crashes when I open up that uh, search online mood. Uh, so if I click that, you can see I can search for things. It's not really good of search. I don't know where it's picking up its search results from, uh, but it's not that great. But you can pick different pictures, just like in the photo ambiance mode, only you can search online for different photos. So let's say this photo here. This is that underwater photo. It doesn't actually let you see it full screen. It just kind of lets you see the small little thing. Uh, I don't know why. So you see that. And if I click this one here, it doesn't. It, you would think that down here would change to that thing. And then I don't know what this is. This is like the lowest quality one, but this is, I guess, another picture that it also can base itself off of. This is like almost the Windows XP looking theme uh, picture, but they have different ones here and you can pick through up here and 
if you pick flowers you can pick flower colors uh travels let's say you like the night theme you can make it more night feeling let's say you want to go to this place here you know you can do that um but yeah it's really cool that you can do all that now you'll notice down here it does change often so let me change it to bigger room so i do not forget yet again because i keep changing the lights on those guests downstairs uh, so now when i select anything it won't keep changing what's everywhere in the house it'll just change this room uh, so you can tweak things you can see you know more colors and things like that it's the similar it's a similar setup of this whole thing you can hit more and it'll keep showing you more and more cars I I wish there was just a big arrow on this side that you can just keep tapping and it scroll left and right maybe but this is just what it does the next thing here you have your disco mode now disco mode basically is it uses your microphone or your input device and it allows you to do different things so basically when I want to play a song and I will actually pause for just a second to get that song together so here I'm gonna show you guys when you play a song you can pick different de intensities of the disco sign and everything like that and this tells you how to use it um, tells you all there's a lot of instructions here but basically all you really need to do is just kind of play around with it and you'll figure it out especially if you're the one to download this application uh, so basically you got your room and I'm set it to bigger room which is this room I'm in and then if I hit play you'll see a pop-up show up at the top of the screen it says I started indefinitely and it tells you seriously one light and you see that as I'm talking it is fluctuating now if I hush you see it barely fluctuates right there so now I'm gonna play a song and we're gonna see what happens So you can see from that it, it works kind of and they say for the peak channel you shouldn't it doesn't work for every song every genre type spectrum rather works a little bit more and this allows you to pick bass channel so if it's bass, depending on the bass level it will fluctuate depending depending on the voice channel it will fluctuate and it'll fade and different things like that um, you can choose your treble um, you can choose different things of how it will interpret treble and things like that you can make it auto stroll I mean auto strobe um, so if I hit play you can see that it is working again uh, you can see that if I talk loud you can see it kind of got a little brighter and if I talk a lot quieter it still kind of kind of gets a little to the darker colors now if I play a song so you can see that because I played a song, I don't know if you, you guys might have not heard the song, but because I played a song, it was able to be more calm. Now, if you see here, I can default default input device right there. Um, let's choose fast pulse on all three and see how crazy it can get. Let's increase the disco intensity to like 16 and let's see where it can go. It says you got to stop it and then you got to hit play again for it to continue. So now hit play. Now it's reset itself and it's at fast pulse, so let's see what happens. So you can see right there that it picked it up and because it is a low beat, you're seeing that my voice is even affecting it. But you see, because it is a low beat, um, kind of like a lo-fi feeling beat, the thing doesn't pulse fast or anything like that. It's really slow. Now, I don't have anything fast that isn't copyrighted, so I'm not going to even try. But you can see that it's a cool feature. Whether you're going to use it, I have no idea. They say you should really just, it's like for parties and things like that. So hitting stop right there, you see it says Live Disco has stopped. Um, and then we move on. So moving on over to camera. Camera is another thing that... It's pretty much like the photo mode, um, basically only when you pick up the camera, which I'm not going to do because I'm actually recording. See, it says cannot be contacted. I'm sure you have downloaded it from HughDynamic.com. Yeah, I'm not going to try doing it just because it will mess up you guys seeing the light itself. But basically, it picks up whatever is in the camera's view and it works the lights based off of that as well. The next thing here, you have your general hue system. Now, this shows all the stuff you have in your hue system every single light here and it lets you manage the lights um, so let's say I want to pick bigger room 
and then see it hover it 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 pulsed bigger room because that is the light I selected. I have different rooms here and it says safety is there. If I click this button, you can rename the light, add a new name, things like that. You can drag them to different rooms and do different things to manage. So you can see which rooms are connected to which ones. Right now, these two are not even on. So that's why it's not telling you there's no signal because we have turned it off from the actual wall itself. Um, but it's, it's a cool thing. You can add rooms, you can edit rooms. See if I hit edit room and I want to rename, you can do that. Find new. There's no new hue things that I have, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, going over next, we have automation. So automation here basically allows you to set a home automation schedule. So I want the lights to turn on at 7 p.m. Uh, every day and turn off at a set time. You can do that. Motion trigger allows you to make a dynamic effect, sound effect, or experience run when a motion sensor is triggered as long as the app is running. For normal motion sensor programming with ambiences or scenes, use the device settings option instead. So you can use different things if you want to make it like a dimmer switch motion sensor. I have a motion sensor, so I can technically do that. So if I do this and I can trigger the effect, uh, choose the motion sensor that will trigger the effect. I want that. Choose the effect, uh, sound effects, doorbell, champagne. Uh, we don't want all the lights. We just want the bigger room to do that and choose the duration, it'll last 10 seconds, add trigger. So when it hears the thing, it says it will do things and it is working. I actually, I see it doing it. So you see the light fluctuated when it said up there on the top of the screen that it triggered. If I wave my hand again, you can see that the thing is finished. If I stop, will it go on? Let's see, looks like it's not really going on that well, but you can see that it works occasionally it's not perfect i don't know if i would ever really do this but let's turn off that motion trigger thing it's kind of cool that maybe let's say you have a security camera in that room you're in or that office and you have a motion sensor let's say you can make that security camera record something when the light is too bright um, so therefore if someone enters into your room the motion sensor will pick up that someone enters into the room and thus fluctuate the light with that light fluctuating the security camera that you might have will then record whatever it needs to record. So that's kind of an idea that you can probably do. And it's and it's pretty cool that you can do all that stuff. Last few things here, you got your fall asleep light. Now this says it's a metronome to help you fall asleep naturally. Um, basically it just kind of pulses the thing and leads to just stimulate your senses and just kind of try to fall asleep. The lights will slowly do its own thing to just try to get it to work. It's very slow and just, let's change it to red. It's very slow and it just, I personally don't see a point, but you can see the light is changing to that color um, and it's pulsing every so just lightly to do it. You can set the fade modes to just different fades, um, but it works. It, it really works. You got brighter because I chose the bigger one uh, and so on like that. So let's try to just uh, let's let's try to get this thing off. There we go. So then it's finished. So you see it stopped right there. I just clicked the screen and it just stopped. Um, but you see that fall asleep light, basically you just leave your thing on and it'll just pulse for whatever amount of time you want to pick the duration. It's down here and then you do that and then it works. Last thing here, you have your settings. There's a lot of settings here. I don't really need to go through like 98% of it. Um, basically you have your different settings for your bridge. You can connect to your bridge with that. Uh, I'm not going to click it just because there's like IP address stuff and all over that. We have your launch to status. So basically when it launches, it'll launch to your status bar. Um, quicker location lookup. If you turn that on, it uses the location data of your computer to figure out the location, thus to make it turn on whether it's sunset and sunrise and so on like that. Hide menu on tap. If you turn that on, it will hide the menu probably at the bottom down here. So that's another cool thing. Globally mute sounds. You can globally mute those sounds that were probably happened that happened in like the ambiences and things like that, where when we clicked over here, and where was it? When we clicked on experiences and we picked different things, it makes sounds. Um, and we can make it so that way all those sounds just end. So that way, if you don't know where it came from, uh, you have your IKEA compatibility. So basically, IKEA smart home system, you just check this off and you can connect your IKEA smart home stuff uh, just really easily. Plex integration, same thing. You can configure Plex media server stuff uh, just by logging into your Plex account. Power cut, you can enable or disable uh, power cut detection. So if you do that, it says if you frequent power cuts or brownouts in your environment, you can it can be inconvenient. 
to reset the default brightness, especially when it's annoying in the middle of the night. Enabling will, will by enabling Hue Dynamic Power Cut Detection, this app will program Hue Bridge and notice when its power has been interrupted. The bridge has finished booting up to power, from a power failure. All the lights will be switched off automatically, so you don't have to keep waking up in the middle of the night to do that. And then you have the Sunset Sim. Basically, you can set sunset thing here. So let's say your sun sets at your sun rises at 6:21 in the morning, and it sets at 8 o'clock at night. You can set different things. You can choose the bedtime, night light, um, and you can set your location. There's a lot of there's a lot of cool things baked into this that just make it work really well. So yeah. So last thing here, we have your info. There's a lot of info, a lot of things you can read. Camera mode tells you what everything does. Everything that I said. It says Microsoft currently only supports Katana on Xbox for UWP apps. Um, Cortana is obviously going away, so this needs to be updated. Uh, but tells you every single thing that has gone on with this. You got the developer's information, which is always something I'm looking for. Uh, you got your mobile apps. I told you they have it for Android and they have it for iPhone and iPad. Donate command line, and then the special thanks to all these people who helped get this app together for Windows 10. If you guys have any questions on this relatively long video, it's probably one of the longer videos that I've done in the past like two months. Let me know in the comment section below. I don't think I can put timestamps in here because it'd be I'd I'd go through the whole entire thing for a long time, but I'll see what I can do. This app is Hue Dynamic for Hue for your Philips Hue system. Uh, it lets you manage everything that you can for Philips Hue, and it looks really good. It's five stars on the iOS App Store, and I think it's five stars on the Google Play Store as well. And I think it's five stars on the Windows 10 Microsoft Store. So take a look at those things. I'll put all the links that you need to know in the description box below as usual. And as always, take care, everybody.